Today we have Siberian Elm. This comes to us from my good friend Dave at Calmwood Creations. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop. Howdy, let's take a closer look at it. The piece is about seven and a half by six and a half by about three inches tall. Siberian Elm, look at that heartwood in there. It's gonna make a real nice contrast with that yellow sapwood, isn't it? Yes, it is, yes it is. So how do we achieve that? We turn it live side up, bark side up. So I'm gonna find the middle here, drill a large flat bottom hole for my chuck jaws to set against. In the middle of that, I'm gonna drill a hole for my woodworm screw. We'll get this mounted up on the lathe and get to turning. I wanted to show you something that I got in the mail. Recently in a video, I mentioned that I wish my little quick connect connection was a little longer. This is what they call a two inch. And I said, I wish I had like a three inch. And to tell you the truth, I've never even shopped for one other than where I got this one at. They have a two inch and a six inch and that's all they have. It didn't occur to me to check anywhere else in the world. <laughs> anyway, I mentioned that in a video. So in the mail the other day, I received this one. And this is a three inch. And it's really high quality. These folks sent it to me. Gary and Katie Lepp from Idaho. And what else do you see on there? Crackling Gourmet Popcorn. They sent me a big box of popcorn samples. I'd show you the box of popcorn samples, but there's not much left. <laughs> I told Gary, uh, thanks, this'll get me through a lot of movie nights. Well, it didn't get through that many movie nights. They have lots of different flavors. I think my favorite current favorite is uh, bacon cheddar. Oh my goodness gracious. Bacon cheddar popcorn. But they have all kinds of flavors. Uh, so you might you might check them out. They have a website, cracklingourmet.com. You might check them out. Anyway, thank you Gary and Katie. I really appreciate that. Before we get started, look who stopped by. Rick Chapman. You've heard me mention Rick many times. He's brought me several pieces of wood over the years and brought me more today. So this will be upcoming soon. Anyway, I just wanted you to meet Rick. Nice guy on his way down to Oregon to see his son and to see Gary. That'll be fun. <laughs> so it's really good to have you here today, Rick. I'm glad you welcomed me. It's beautiful here. Thank you. Appreciate it. It's so relaxing in the woods. This is an awesome oasis. It is. I appreciate that too. All right, well, let's get back to turning. All that was yesterday. Today is a new day. We still have the Siberian Elm, however. There's something I wanted to tell you about Rick Chapman. I didn't I didn't want to put him on the spot at the time, but Rick not only brings me wood, he, he supports a lot of different wood turning channels with wood. A large variety of folks that turn wood. He's just a really nice guy that has come across quite a little bit of wood in his lifetime, and he says he's glad to pass it along. He's also a wood turner. Got himself an American Beauty lathe. He's just a nice guy that's all okay this is Siberian elm and it's pretty much in balance so we're gonna be turning at 800 rpm I'm gonna turn from the top side down to keep the bark on 5 8 inch bowl gouge mask and face shield on I recently did one with square ends, so we're going to round this one all the way up. Okay, round on both ends. I'm not done with it, but I do want to come down here and lay out for a recess or a tenon, one or the other, and then and then I'll know how much, what I can do over here after I've done that. Of course, the first thing I have to do is flatten it off. And also, uh, we're up to 1200 RPM. Thank you. 
pretty color. Love the contrast between the yellow and the kind of purplish, isn't it? No, it's not just brown, it's purplish. As I said so. Yeah, I think we will go with the recess. For that, I'll use a half inch bowl guard. Use my recess tool to put a dovetail on the outside edge here. That's good. I made the recess a little deeper than I needed to so that I can provide a base here. Set them up too high now. That looks okay. That looks better. Okay, and now I'm gonna come over here. I actually like what I've got going on, so I'm really not gonna change much. I'm just gonna scrape it. That's kind of cool looking. Got a bit of a crack there developing. Another one here. Oh, uh-oh. I think Dave said this wood was down for a year. Maybe it's not quite dry. I guess I should have checked it. Too late now, isn't it? I like it. Time for sanding. I'm gonna start the sanding with my sandal flex. I'm gonna sand all the bark along this top edge here. We'll be turning away a lot of it in the middle, but not out here. So I'm going to sand all that with my sandal flex starting at 120 grit then I'll move to 180 grit and stop there. That's as fine as I like to go on the bark. That cleans it up, makes it feel good but it doesn't really change how it looks. When I'm done with that I'll switch to my two inch disc starting at 80 grit working up through 400 and I'll show you what all that looks like as soon as I get my mask on. I'll be doing a lot more of that, but that's generally what it looks like. And with the lathe spinning in reverse at 400 RPM. That's what that looks like. I'll bring it back here in a bit and we'll put some kind of finish on there. Probably sanding sealer. See you in a bit. This is going to be an outstanding piece. We're going to have three distinct colors. We're going to have the dark bark. It's going to be very dark after uh, it gets some finish on it. And that'll be next to the yellow and then we'll have the purplish color. And then we've got the dark, dark brown from the bark inclusions. And it's kind of a cool shape. I saw it developing, so I just went with that. See? Isn't that nice? Wait till you see it on the bark. 
I've got to brush that on, of course. Oh, and this is sanding sealer. Shellac based sanding sealer. And I plan on putting on two coats of this and then two coats of shellac over it. See that bark? Getting all dark. Very cool. There won't be that much of it left after we're done turning the inside, but there'll be a sufficient amount. It'll have a nice shine to it. And then don't forget to come behind that brush with your rag to wipe up any brush marks or runs or brush strokes or whatever you might have left around this edge. It is soaking it up pretty good. It might take three coats of this. I don't know. Okay, well that's generally what it's going to look like. A little bit shinier than this. So I'll finish this up and tomorrow, because it's getting nigh on to steak and french fries time, I will bring you back and we'll start working on the inside. See you tomorrow. I've turned the piece around and have the chuck jaws expanded into the recess. These are kind of cool, but that one's got to go for sure. And probably at least half of this one has to go in order to get any sort of a size bowl out of this. Got to do what you got to do. I'm going to be using a half inch bowl gouge. We're going to be turning at 1500 RPM. Mask and face shield on. Half of it. That might be about right though. See how we're doing here? Gotta love all the color, huh? I do. I'm gonna shear scrape this side here a little bit. to go but you know yeah got about an inch total right now Half an inch. I just want to leave that, that's all. It's not much, but it's kind of an interesting little feature. I'm debating if I want to scrape it or not. The wood's not all that hard and sometimes scraping it tears up the grain. I will do just a little more shear scraping. I'm gonna go with that. Yes, I am. Time for sanding. Before I start sanding, I wanna discuss something that comes up from time to time. Now, I know these sides are pretty thick. I, I can see that. 
<laughs> it's not a surprise to me. So a lot of people would tell me, you should have undercut it. Well, I'll tell you why I don't. But I started to, and then I saw that I would lose this piece right here. And it's important to me. This, this whole situation going on here is important to me. And I would have cut this off. That, that probably would have remained, at least some of it. But this would have been gone. And, and I just like it. It's just... It, it's just different. It's a feature. You know, that's a branch that started coming out here. That's part of it. The other part is these two edges are higher. This one is actually higher than that one. And both of them are higher than this one. And this is the lowest one. And if I was undercutting this, besides losing this piece, undercutting is going in, in that way and then down so that this sticks out further this way than this would if I undercut it. I hope, I hope you can follow that. Well, what happens when you get down here? This side here is just about gone. It's just about straight up and down. So by the time I finished my curve on the inside, this would be even lower. This would be like out here somewhere. And it just wouldn't look good. It wouldn't look good at all. And this would be half gone. This would be gone. So that's why I don't undercut this type of bowl. Undercutting is fine if you're doing a nice round bowl and you want it for some kind of an effect or something. I, I, I try not to do effects. I try to do natural. What I'm after here is the dark color of the bark, then the yellow, then the dark color of the heartwood. That's what I'm after. I'm not after an effect. I hope that makes sense. I hope that answers the question why I don't undercut some of these bowls like this. I know this is chunky looking. I know that. I like chunky. I like to pick up a bowl and feel the heft of it, you know. It makes it feel valuable, I guess. We all do that, I think, don't we? You pick up anything and you, and you feel it. And, and if it doesn't feel like anything, if it's really light, it's kind of a disappointment. This is gonna feel good. It's all curvy out here. It's gonna be curvy inside here when we're done. It's, it just feels good. Feels good in your hand. Have a little heft. So those are a few reasons why I don't do it. We're gonna be starting sanding at 80 grit and I'll work up through 400. I'll have the lathe spinning in reverse at 400 RPM. And I'll show you what that looks like as soon as I get my mask on. And I could do forward as well. And like I said, up through 400. I'll bring you back and we'll put some sanding sealer in there and I'll see you in just a bit. Well, alrighty then. See what we got. We got prettiness. Yeah. Got those cracks I gotta brush into a little bit. Bar conclusions. That's kind of what it's gonna look like. I'll bring you back here in a little bit and we'll take a good look at this thing sitting upright. See you in a bit. Be sure and watch for the before and after shots of this piece at the end of the video. If you'd share the video, I'd really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Well, here it is one Siberian elm tricolor bowl in the books naturally tricolor. We didn't have to add anything to it. A little bit of turning and there it is. I love that part. I just love that. Same part on the inside. Kind of an interesting shape. Nicely rounded. Siberian elm. Who knew? Do you see anything in this one? Any faces or critters or whatever? I don't. I wish I did. Maybe you do. That look like anything? A big old Y. Yellowstone. Good TV show. Well, there it is. It was a lot of fun to turn. A lot of fun to turn. It really was. It's really fun when you can get the speed up. It just, it's just, the wood just comes off so easily. Let me know what you think. Thank you, Dave from Calmwood Creations for sending this along for all to enjoy. If you like this video, thumbs up, please. I'd sure appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, thank you very kindly. I truly appreciate that. 
and I really appreciate you taking your time to spend with me today. I look forward to your comments. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.